Welcome to, This Cruel World. In these videos, we will be going through victims that had unfortunately crossed paths with Jeffrey Dahmer. If you haven't done so already, please consider watching Dahmer's other victims linked at the end of this video. This is Errol Lindsay and he was Jeffrey Dahmer's 11th victim. Lindsay was 19 years old at the time of his murder and was the youngest of six siblings. Lindsay had a girlfriend who was pregnant with his first child. His daughter, Tatiana, now 31 years old was born six months after Lindsay's death. According to the, the U.S. Sun, Lindsay was described as an upstanding and generous individual who loved helping others and took pleasure in making new friends. He was also known to be a young man who was quite popular among his friendship group and was very close to his family, especially his mother and sister. On April 7, 1991, Lindsay was running an errand but never made it home. He would have had to pass Dahmer's apartment, located within two blocks, on his way to get a key cut. With his openness to making new friends, Dahmer was able to strike up a conversation with Lindsay. Dahmer used his charm to then lure Lindsay back to his apartment. When Lindsay did not come home, his family knew that something bad must have happened. Lindsay's mother, Mildred, told reporters at the time, he was a mama's boy. He wouldn't even go out with his friends without calling me to see what I was doing, according to in Schwartz's book, Monster, The True Story of the Jeffrey Dahmer Murder. When Lindsay was back at Dahmer's apartment, Dahmer stepped into a new level of cruelty. With his desire to keep his victims under his complete and total control, Dahmer experimented with making living zombies. It took, it took more and more uh, deviant-type behaviors to satisfy uh, my urges. After drugging Lindsay, he used a power drill to drill a hole into his head. He then poured hydrochloric acid into the hole. However, his gruesome experiment did not work. Dahmer hated disposing of his victims, and he came up with an idea that was more horrific than anything he had already done. It was a way to keep his would-be victims alive. What Jeffrey did to Errol Lindsay was so beyond the pale, I mean, you really can't write this stuff. In his mind, he was trying to create a kind of a zombie, someone in a zombie state. He wanted these people to stay with him. He didn't want them to leave, and he didn't really want them to die. During Dahmer's interview after his arrest, he said soon after pouring the acid into Lindsay's head, he regained consciousness and sat up complaining of a headache. Lindsay asked for some water, in which Dahmer gave him although spiked with more sleep aid. After Lindsay passed out for a second time, Dahmer strangled him and decapitated his head, keeping only the skull. Dahmer said that he did try to preserve Lindsay's skin, however, it did not work. He had to dispose of it, along with the remaining body parts. Police found Lindsay's skull after Dahmer's arrest. Immediately after Dahmer's arrest, Lindsay's family searched frantically around Dahmer's apartment, looking for clues if Lindsay was one of Dahmer's victims according to the Associated Press. His heartbroken family never recovered from their loss. Rita Isbell, Lindsay's sister, could not hold back her hatred for Dahmer, as seen in court. My name is Rita Isbell and I'm the oldest sister of Errol Lindsay. Je whatever your name is, Satan. I'm mad. This is how you act when you are out of control. I don't want to ever see my mother have to go through this again. Never, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, I hate you, mother.
Please like and subscribe to our channel as we will continue to go through each of Jeffrey Dahmer's victims in the upcoming videos.